Overhyping stuff is not a good idea. So many times has the hive mind that is the internet gotten excited to play a game that just didn't live up to expectations. I know me personally, I don't find myself falling into these engorged hype cycles anymore. Because, well, I've been burned one too many times by my own sky-high expectations. And now, I, I, I'm just dead inside. I want to explore why we do this to ourselves, because nothing crushes your dreams quite like finding out that the thing you thought that would be great wasn't as great as you uh, thought it would be. In this past decade, we've had a lot of examples of this. Mass Effect Andromeda was bad because EA sucks, and Fallout 76 was bad because Bethesda sucks. Death Stranding was just a reskin of Soda Drinker Pro. Sure, some of these were long-awaited continuations of highly acclaimed franchises. Some were just using industry icons as leverage for crowdfunding, and some were just pretty graphics and nothing more. But the one aspect that all these games share is that they made you get your tickets for the hype train. You took a brief ride and departed into the nearest Grand Canyon. So what I did is I found lists of the most anticipated games for each year spanning 2010 to 2015. Then I compared these listed titles to their final aggregate Metacritic scores. Out of these games, very few actually are good, and even less manage to reach the ever-elusive status of great or like a 90 on Metacritic. Consider that at one point, all of these games were actually anticipated by somebody. Not saying anybody expected all of them to be a Game of the Year contender, but it's pretty astounding how few of them managed to even get a decent Metacritic score. In all odds, most titles that you anticipate will not live up to expectations. So, why do people still do this? Well, first off, people do just like to look forward to things. Before the days of the Twitters and the this, overhyping something was mostly constrained to the immediate social group. Now it's a shared experience across all forums of the World Wide Web. But of course, when it comes to anything in regards to the entertainment business, money does manage to cause its fair share of problems along the way. Whether you're one of those gaming news websites or a YouTuber who posts each and every gaming rumor and speculation, nothing hurts the influx of cash more than a drought of information. It gets especially bad during the summer months, right after major and announcements have been made, and new releases are still a few months out. During this time, there's really not that much of an incentive for people to click on articles, so instead, they gotta count on something else. Rampant speculation and simply mentioning the most anticipated titles. Rumors, quotes, screenshots, anything that pertains to these biggest releases. Because everything else just won't get you as many clicks. If something feels like it's all around you being mentioned by everybody, it's probably because the media is keeping it in the public consciousness. Think about it, without the stream of online content that is indirectly promoting these games, the most you'd hear about them would be once every few weeks or months, only the official content from official sources. Since the media can rely on this for clicks, they post more content about said game, and then people get more hyped for said game. They talk about their hype online, and it influences others to get hyped for said game. It's a positive feedback loop. And all of this doesn't seem too outlandish. I mean, after all, every title does get at least a little bit of hype. But there's a big difference between the hype for a Watch Dogs Legion and, well, the uh, this. And that's because the most important element that elevates a game's hype to truly legendary status is that oh-so-abstract conception of 
time. Generally, we see games get announced maybe a year or two before release, sometimes a bit more, sometimes a bit less. But once you start getting into three years or more, that's when the hype goes from a positive sidestep of marketing to something less predictable. Sometimes a game is delayed but still in the public spotlight. Sometimes it's just vaporware that might not ever see the light of day. We take this as a standard for video games, but this is pretty uncommon in any other part of the entertainment industry. Very few films will launch a trailer this early before release. This causes problems because once the game is out there, once it's something more tangible than a rumor, that's when people allow themselves to get excited. So why do this? What possible reason is there? What justification exists for dragging fans along for half a decade, knowing full well their expectations will only get harder to appease? Well, it's not really that they want to most of the time. It's not that ideal to the developer or publisher at all. This hype is a dangerous thing, a balancing act, because if it goes overboard, well, sales will suffer. Now, you can't really just announce a game and have a release date set for two weeks in advance. Pre-orders and day one sales consist of a good chunk of a game's lifetime adoption. Not to mention, in those cases, some other marketing and cross promotion work is done, and this means that it would have leaked well in advance if this was the case. And this doesn't seem like such a bad thing to us, but if you're trying to get the product out there on time while meeting expectations, well, a leak can derail all of that. I'm sure the reaction to Apex Legends would have been vastly different if the only thing we knew was that Respawn is making an FPS called Apex Legends. Mass disappointment would have set in when it would be a free-to-play battle royale. Beyond the fan reaction, though, there's a lot of business elements to consider. It's just as much a teaser for the fans as it is sort of a help-wanted ad. Developers themselves might want to tell friends and family what they're working on, but they signed NDAs. On a more positive note, showing a game off gets people talking. While it can lead to overhype, which is why I'm talking about it, it can also heavily influence the game. Consumers rarely have say in what they want to see in media. It's usually just the product of a singular vision, or a select few. When hundreds of people are working on something, a singular vision can be hard to maintain, so having some external influence isn't all that rare. At the same time, it's not particularly wise to invest millions of dollars in creating gameplay systems and art assets only to redo all that work if they think the public isn't happy and they want to actually cater to that. Not that early announcements are always so altruistic. Sometimes it can just be an attempt to garner some goodwill when you might be expecting negative backlash or it's to just sell people on a platform that will eventually have these games. Square Enix is notorious for these decade-long marketing cycles, and it's gotten so bad that most people flat out don't get excited for upcoming projects by them, at least until they're basically done. Remember that Final Fantasy 16 was in fact announced this year, given a full trailer, and I still haven't heard a single word about it since then. Because people don't expect it anytime soon. If your expectations are the best game of all time, odds are you're going to be disappointed. Unless it's like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 or Super Mario Yoshi Land. Just statistically, it's improbable. <laughs> That's not to say that players aren't misled all the time, but I did a whole video on that. Having initial gameplay reveals with vertical slices and unrealistic graphics promising more than can be delivered, we've seen this time and time again. Launch titles that get hyped up only to be graphical tech demos. Remember The Order 1886? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but the hype was real leading up to launch. Major concerns involving low frame rates and quick time events were simply dismissed as making the game more cinematic and then it bombed. People often get held up on who exactly is making the game. This is important because traditionally a developer that makes one hit will probably continue to make hits. This gives a good bit of cachet to the name of the studio, and then this is exploited by the publisher. Take Bioware or Bethesda. At one point, these names were associated with quality, but then how did these bombs make their way out then? Well, part of it's because it's not even 
believe in the same studio. Multiple teams are set up spread across the world, all sharing a name, just for the sake of giving any future projects that extra bit of merit. If the studio making Mass Effect Andromeda was called EA Worldwide, I'm sure people wouldn't have expected the best game in the end. But then, what about something like Anthem? Well, a lot of times, people just leave the studio. When talent leaves, the future of a project is completely undecided. Nothing is a surefire hit until it's actually out there. We usually won't know what went wrong until years after. And by the time we do, it only offers to add more cynicism to upcoming titles. And we can blame the publishers, and we can blame the media. But at some point, you gotta recognize the blame is somewhat on us. Again, just think about how many games were expected to be better than they ended up. Nowadays, we can have the hindsight to say, yeah, that was gonna be shit, it's obvious. But that hindsight only offers to blind us that it could happen again. People want to be excited for stuff in the future, to think some event or object will make them happier than they are right now. That's an inevitability. It's human nature. But there's a difference between expecting something to be good and relying on it. Next time you think about getting hyped for big game number 343, just remember these charts, these most anticipated titles of those years, and how many of them lived up to what people wanted. Because odds are some game that you're looking forward to might end up just like this. And that's why I'm proud to finally reveal my new upcoming game entitled Untitled Snowman Project. Sure, it runs on Unreal Engine 4 now, but I'll be moving it over to 5 in the next year, and then uh, expect it sometime this decade. Also, it's going to be completely worth the wait and the best game you've ever played, I promise.